Hey guys, Tinker's Musings here. Today we're going to cover Proxmox and LXCs and how to make a Mad Max Linux container. All right, let's get started. When you open up your Proxmox web interface, you'll be greeted with something similar to this. I'm running Proxmox 7.7, .7, sorry. I'm running Proxmox 7.1-7. I have a custom theme applied that's the dark theme. I can leave a link down below in the description on how to install that. Uh, out of the box, you will, you'll have a white screen. I like dark theme, so this is what I'm going with. Anyway, uh, on the left, we need to select a node. For this one, I'm going to use my DL380G7. And once we select the node, we can create the container. For the host name, I'm going to call it Mad Max, and we'll call it Mad Max SAS because I already have a Mad Max container on another server. You can't have two servers with the same name. Give yourself a password. You could use an SSH public key if you so please, but we will get into that another time if you're interested. And for the template, we need to select where the template is stored. I've already downloaded the template on the NVMe storage. And we're going to choose Ubuntu 20.04. Alright, now this is where we're going to create the virtual disk. And this is also going to be on the NVMe storage. I'm going to give it 50 gigabytes. That's more than enough. And the nice thing about these disk images is that they'll only take up the space that they need. So it won't be the full 50 gigabytes. It just gives flexibility for that growth if you need it. Since this container is just Mad Max, we don't really need 50. I'm just being safe. Okay, the system that I'm running has two six core CPUs, dual X5690, and with hyper threading enabled, that's six cores, 12 threads per CPU. And with Proxmox, we have each of those available to us as CPUs. All right, next we'll give it some RAM. 32 gigabytes should be sufficient. And the swap space, I'm not entirely sure how much we need, but since I have this available, I'm going to give it 8 gigabytes. And for the network, I usually choose DHCP. This means that the router gives an IP address. You could also give it a static IP address. DNS settings I leave alone. And then afterwards, we can make sure everything is good to go. I just checked start after created and that will make sure that the container starts up. Now we see the container logs and it's creating. Okay. Task okay means that it's done. Let's close the dialog and wait for it to start. All right. It's just started up. In a moment here, we'll start to see metrics from the container. So we have CPU usage and we have memory, network traffic, disk IO. And the next thing we need to do is go into the console. And this is where we'll use the root login. And that password that you created. Okay, let's go to the Mad Max GitHub. And let's follow our build instructions for Ubuntu 20.04. Okay, and since we're already root, we don't need to do anything with sudo. We just paste that directly into the console.
Once that's complete, we'll move on to the next step. All right, almost there. And now we're ready. Let's clone. Okay, now we need to change into that plotter directory, this Chia plotter. And at this point, we've already installed all the build tools and dependencies. So the next thing to do is run the git submodule update. And this is going to go pull some additional dependencies. All right, now we can run make develop. Okay, now we're building, and once the build is complete, we can begin setting up our plots. So let's do an LS and the Mad Max utility is going to be in the build directory. We're not ready to go into this yet. We actually need to make a couple of edits to the Linux container configuration and then we'll be ready to jump in. Okay, at this point we need to open up a separate terminal. For this, I have Windows Terminal. And I'm, a, I'm already SSH'd into my node, my Proxbox node, the DL3DG7. And this is where we have all the Proxmox virtual environment things, such as LXC, node definition, virtual machines if you have any, uh, but today we're, we're going to go into this LXC, and here is where we're going to edit the config. And my favorite editor in the command line, or my favorite editor in Linux from command prompt is bin. So the path is etc pve LXC slash whatever your container ID will be. All right. Now that we have this open, we need to edit this. And so we go into insert mode. Typically what I'll do is put it right underneath the network and we need to type in what's called a mount point. And these are zero based. Any mounts that go in here, start with zero. Okay. And so we give it a path. I already have a path called SAS storage. And we do the trailing slash and then we do a comma MP equals mount SAS storage. My SAS storage is 16 times 300 gigabytes SAS drives. And it is there. These are all 10 10,000 RPM SAS drives, very fast. To break down this line, the first part is what the host path is, essentially. And then the second part is where we're going to mount it into the Linux container. If you're familiar with Docker, this is similar in the sense that we're passing a host path into the container. A volume is analogous in the Docker world. Okay. Now this is done, we save it, 
right and quit. And we'll go back to our Proxmox window. All right, we need to restart the container. It's okay to just hit reboot. Another option would be to just type reboot right there in the console. Over on the resources, we now see our new mount point. In order for this storage to be available, we have to reboot the container and then it's available for us. Okay, so in order to plot, we need to make sure we have write permissions. And here we'll just type in a dfs-h and we need to give write permissions. Normally you should not do 777 on the, a path, but since this is just for Chia, it's okay. Now we also need to make the directories for the temp path and the Chia pool path. It's important for us to designate the separate paths so that we don't have temp files mixed in with the final plots. That just makes it easier for you to go back and get the plots once they're complete. All right. So we'll make a directory for Chia temp and we'll also do one for Chia pool. So another important thing to do is give the subdirectories write permissions as well. Okay, back in the Linux container, let's check if we have write permissions. We do. All right, so now we're ready to plot. Let's go ahead and copy this command that I will make available. One thing to remember is we need to have trailing slashes. I forgot that. And if you forget to have trailing slashes on your pads, then it'll just tell you to add the trailing slashes. And we should be good to go. Since I don't want to plot indefinitely, uh, just switch it to one. All right, let's hit enter and then we can go okay we're off to the races and we will come back when this plot is finished Yeah, 77 minutes isn't too bad. I know we can do better, so why don't we do a follow-up video and see if we can get some better performance. That'll do it for this video, guys. Please leave any comments or questions below, and I'll be happy to answer them. And please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.